Hey everyone, this is Geeky Panda here, Panda Guys, with another one of my Panda Vlogs. This time, I'm going to be going through a bit of my PlayStation 3 collection. Now, my PS3 collection will include all my physical games and also some of my downloadable uh, games as well. Now, do note that uh, my downloadable games on the PlayStation Network, it doesn't have all of them on there. But, I still got some good stuff too, which, it's actually interesting because I am going to be trying to shift towards a physical, li a mostly physical library for the PS3. So any games I have uh, digitally, I'll eventually have physically. So let's begin, shall we? Okay, first game on the list is, oh, fuck. I'm still angry at this game. I'm still angry. But, Aliens Colonial Marines. I don't... I, I, I don't even know why I still have this at this point. I, I, I don't know. All right, next up is, oh yes, Battlefield 3. Now, when this first came out, I was, again, I'm a huge Battlefield fan to this day. I bought it for not only the PS3, but the Xbox 360 and the PC at the same time. Like my, uh, when I was working at GameStop, when we did the Midnight, my GameStop manager was like, wow, you really like Battlefield Dungeon? Like, yep, yep. So uh, many, many hours were put into this and Oh, the DLC content was, like, really good, too. Oh, yes. Battlefield Bad Company. This was something that DICE did differently with its Battlefield series, but ultimately, this... I, I love the Bad Company series. The Bad Company series was amazing with the first one, which... It was, like, basically DICE's attempt at making a decent single-player campaign. It was humorous. It was, it was fun. I loved it. it. It was its own thing. And of course, next up is Battlefield Bad Company 2. Now this game, I put so many goddamn hours in. This game, to me, is definitely one of the best Battlefield games in this series. It was so well done. I enjoyed the hell out of not only the single player campaign, but the multiplayer cam uh, as well. And it just sucks that DICE, they don't know what they did in order to make this game great. So I, I, just, I just really want the next Battlefield game to be Bad Company. Like, give us Bad Company 3, guys. Come on. All right, next up is Beyond Two Souls. This is actually the Steelbook, I believe, the, the limited edition. Uh, this is an insanely, insanely, insanely good game. The developers also did stuff like Heavy Rain, Indigo Prophecy, and of course, Detroit Become Human. And if you hadn't checked this out, I highly recommend it. This is a really great game with uh, just an awesome story. So, and also, it's a really, a really decent cast behind it too. Bioshock Infinite. Uh, to me, this game was actually was a really good game. Uh, single player, of course, but the PlayStation 3 version also includes the original Bioshock game. So this is technically two games in one, which overall, I enjoyed it. I loved it. The ending to me was like the, like the oh shit moment, like, <laughs> but overall, definitely worth recommending owning this game. Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger. Now, I love fighting games, and the Blaze Blue fighting series has always had a special place in my heart. This game in particular was really awesome. I love it how the single player, there was a single player portion, there was, honest to God. Borderlands 2, this was an awesome, and I do mean awesome, uh, co-op game. I loved the first Borderlands, I played it a lot with my friends in college, and when the second one came out, it was like, oh my god, they it's Borderlands, but ten times better. Sadly though, with how Gearbox is doing, we probably won't get a Borderlands 3. We, well, we might, but we probably won't. But just, I don't know what Gearbox is doing right now. Next up is Brutal Legend, a mix between like a third, like a third person action strategy game, but it has Jack Black in it. It has other noticeable awesome musicians in here, including Ozzy Osbourne. Overall, this game had personality and it was awesome. The uh, third person ha hack and slash moments were great. It had a bit of a little bit of an open world to it, but the strategy with the battles I enjoyed. But overall, this game gave me a good laugh and an enjoyable experience. Call of Duty Black Ops. Now, when this first came out, I was kind of off put by it because again, I was riding on the highs of Modern Warfare 2, but still this game definitely, it was one of Treyarch's best uh, for the series, especially when it came to the campaign. The multiplayer was really good, really addicting, and of course they uh, capitalized on the Nazi zombies mode by making it really awesome, better, especially with the DLC. Overall, I highly recommend owning this. All right, next up, Modern Warfare 2. This was, to me, this was Infinity War's last great Call of Duty game. This was 
It had a really awesome campaign, really awesome soundtrack, had a decent story, and had a fantastic multiplayer. Even though the multiplayer, there were some gameplay stuff that could have been fixed, like the noob teams were annoying, the one-man army was really annoying, it, the glitches, it was, it was crazy back then. It was like the Wild West, the hackers, but overall, I had so many goddamn good experiences with this. I still remember when this game first came out, again, in college, all the, in the dorms, everyone was playing this. Everyone was playing this. And even the Spec Ops co-op mode was awesome too because we were trying to max that out on Veteran and I had a lot of fun times with this. Playing, you know, the campaign, playing this co-op mode, split screen online, or playing multiplayer with my friends. Next up, Modern Warfare 3. Again, an Infinity Ward game, but this was after the whole spiel of what happened with Modern Warfare 2 with the, the head of the uh, Infinity Ward plus a good amount of the staff left. So they had Sledgehammer Games team up with Infinity Ward to help release this overall. It's a it's a decent game. It's not as good as the uh, Modern Warfare 2. The multiplayer had some uh, some nice moments. There's some good maps. The Spec Ops mode came back, which I liked, but it was just not as good as the second one. If you really wanted to hate yourself, go with Dark Souls. You cannot go wrong. When this game first came out, uh, I, I still remember people like complaining, like it's too hard, it's too hard, and then the whole get good mentality meme came with it. It's not per se a hard game. It's just it, you have to be. You have to learn a lot. Patience, learn your, your enemies' movements and tactics, the bosses. It's just there wasn't. It doesn't necessarily have like a story camp, like a story uh, how it lays out like other single player based games. Like you really have to dive into the lore to figure out what's going on. But overall, I love the game. I love the series. I love its atmosphere, and overall, it has some actually great characters in it. So, plus the DLC, I felt like a fucking asshole playing the DLC. Let's just. Ugh, I, it, uh, you guys know what I mean. <laughs> Dead Space. This, <laughs> this was a really interesting game because there was a lot of talk about this, especially about how you couldn't, t uh, the, the developers were thinking about not uh, allowing you to pause if the game will still keep going, but this is a fantastic horror game this is even though there's a there's shooting mechanics in here it was heavily based in horror and i fucking loved it it was basically like aliens meets the thing in space so if you're looking for a really good horror game and if you haven't played dead space i highly recommend this game now dead space 2 i enjoyed it it didn't have as much horror because it it had like a really good hybrid mix of both horror and shooting, well, action shooting mechanics. Like, it, the horror was still there, but it, they just developed more of the shooting mechanics more, but it had the story, Isaac Clarke uh, talked, because in this game he didn't talk, so it was kind of like Gordon Freeman moment, but this one he did talk, and I enjoyed the story. The multiplayer felt really tacked on, but I enjoyed it for what it was. It was okay, you know, it was just something, but the single player, I really, 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 this is why publishers shouldn't tell developers that, you know, how, what to do in their games. Just let the developers kind of go buck wild and just do it themselves, you know? Like, Visceral Games is a really good company. They know how to make horror games, but this, this was more on action, less on horror, which kind of sucked because it, like, for, for all intents and purposes, the DLC felt more like a Dead Space game than Dead Space 3 for this. Dragon Age Origins, a really good, well done RPG for you RPG fans out there. Granted, it was a little rough around the edges, but overall, I really enjoyed this game a lot. The story, its characters, the series was also good too. Dragon Age 2 was a little bit of a different story. A little bit, but Inquisition was fun too, but this is the game where it started it all. So, if you want a really good dark fantasy RPG, I highly recommend going with this game. You, you literally can't go wrong. Duke Nukem Forever, a game that, oh god, it took way too long to make. You know, I'm really happy that it came out at least. Like, the fact that the game came out, okay, I knew that in part of my mind that it wasn't going to be as great of a game. Like, to me personally, the when the game was on the Unreal Engine, it looked fucking fantastic. But it went through so many engines, it went through two like different developers, it just... I, I, I wasn't expecting it to be a great game, I was expecting it to be a Duke Nukem game. And for, for you know all of that, it is a Duke Nukem game. It's a love it or hate it game. 
it's Duke Nukem. It's just got like really cheesy jokes in it. It's just, again, it's a love it or hate it game. So I'm just happy that the game finally came out. Next up on the list is Enemy Territory Quake Wars. Now, I was a huge fan of the Enemy Territory series with the Wolfenstein game, but this one, I loved. I actually enjoyed the living shit out of this on the PC. While the console versions were, of course, not the better ones to get, like, I believe, I think the PS3 actually was kind of like the worst version you could get. I still enjoyed it for what it was. Uh, 16 player multiplayer on the PS3, but now no one really plays anymore. You can just play with bots. And even then, it's like, it's eh. Like, during the time, it was actually pretty interesting. I enjoyed it. If you were an Enemy Territory fan, I know you played it. So, but overall, uh, yeah. Uh, it's, just, it's just the PS3, it's just, there's no real campaign. It's just, you're facing against bots. But the multiplayer war is sad, but no one really plays multiplayer anymore. Next up, Enchanted Arms. Oh, jeez. Every time I think of this game, I think of one particular character because his voice my god <laughs> if i didn't make it blatantly obvious you ready for this yeah! the i really did enjoy this i got pretty far into this game like pretty goddamn far when this game first came out and i stopped and i hated myself because i wish i could have kept on going so i i do recommend this this is this is the funny thing enough is, it was published by Ubisoft. Yeah, this was published by Ubisoft. This is from From Software, but overall, I really like this uh, JRPG. It was a grid-based uh, battle system. The story was, uh, to me, it kept me going. Like, the story honestly kept me going, but the, it, again, this is from From... It is so weird saying it. It's from From Software. It's made by from from yeah, it's made by from software, but I enjoyed it for what it was. I'm probably gonna do a let's play of this again just so I can finally beat it. So fans, I'm gonna play this again. All right, next up on the list is Fear, also known as First Encounter Assault Recon. This was a game that mixed in first-person shooter elements with a with the Japanese horror theme. It honestly, it, 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 it's basically what it is. First person shooter elements, Japanese horror theme, and a bit of slow motion because I I seriously did enjoy this game. Like the first game was good, it was pure. It was like, it was, there was definitely moments that it, that it like jump scared me. And I was like, I really don't like this. I really don't like this. But when it gets to action packed, I'm like, okay, let's do this. But when it gets to creepy moments, they really, really nailed it. So if you want a, if you want a good horror FPS experience, you cannot go wrong with Fear. Ah, Fear 2 Project Origin, a sequel to Fear. Now, again, it's kind of like similar to Dead Space where they kind of ramped up the uh, the shooting action a little bit, but it still had the horror elements. He plays a different character in this one. Uh, things went to hell in a handbasket for the first game, so this one continues off after it. Overall, if you're a fan of the series, I definitely recommend playing it. And if you're new to the series, you know, just try it out. You might enjoy this game. All right, next up is God of War 3. Don't fuck with Kratos. GoldenEye 007 Reloaded. Now, this was, uh, GoldenEye originally, I believe, came out on the Wii first, and then they decided to port it over to the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3. This was basically, Dan, you know, a uh, focused single-player title with Daniel Craig as James Bond, but there were some elements of past, you know, enemies uh, and evil villains in the James Bond series with this. It had its own multiplayer mode up to 16 players. Overall, I plan on doing a Let's Play of this to check this game out because back in the day, I was a huge James Bond series fan with GoldenEye. All right, next up, we have Homefront. This was a game made by... This game had a lot of potential. It, made, it was made by Chaos Studios, the same guys who did the Desert Comet mod for Battlefield 1942, and they also helped develop Battlefield 2. Uh, this game, even though the single player wasn't as good as it hyped up to be, I enjoyed it for what it was. The multiplayer is where it was at. It had a really fun multiplayer system, up to 32 players online duking it out. And it wasn't like vehicles were on the map, you take it, no, it rewarded you for playing good. So it, I, I kind of like that system because if you know how to play, 
you get rewarded for it, and, you know, but overall, the, it sucks because this was basically Chaos and Studios' uh, swan song, because this is what killed them. Next up on the list is uh, the Journey's Collector Edition. Now, this includes both uh, Flower and Flow, which they are all three really great games. Like, that game company really knocked it out of the park with Journey. I loved Flower. It is, it, like, these three games, they were, they're simple, but it just art it's the soundtrack just just brings you into it and if if you don't own any of these titles the journey collector's edition comes with all three of them and they i highly recommend it just pick it up they are truly truly awesome so kingdom hearts uh hd 2.5 remix which is technically three kingdom hearts games in one it's, it's kingdom hearts like, what else do you want me to expect like the third one comes out this month thank fucking christ but I don't know what else to say about this. All right, next up on the list is Killer Is Dead, made by the same guys who did the No More Heroes series. I honestly, honestly, God, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest here. I never played this game before. I picked it up because it was made by the same guys who did No More Heroes, but I never played it. But I'm going to fix that because I'm going to be playing it again for one of my Let's Play videos in the future for this year. So I head on to the list because, hey, it's like it's made by who? Okay, yeah, I'll buy it again. Sometimes I buy games based on the developers. Lollipop Chainsaw. Nani? Made by the same guys who did more, No More Heroes. The, the, the last game I also just did. Anyways! <laughs> Mass Effect 2. Now, the PlayStation 3 version included not only uh, bonus content, but also because the first game never released on the PS3, they had like the DLC of, okay, this is what happened in the first one, here are your choices that you can choose, and then bam, we can start with the second one. To this date, this to me is the best in the Mass Effect series. The second one was the best. The first one, we opened up to a new world. The second one, they refined it and they made it so goddamn good. The third one, while it did have some really good stories, it wasn't as good as it should have been, especially with the ending. But I loved this game to death. Like, I feel really jealous because people who haven't played this before and just started playing it, it's just that experience of like, holy shit, you know, it's just really crazy and I miss that. Coming up next is Mass Effect 3. Again, uh, the game wasn't as good as it should have been, but it did have some really good moments, some of the characters' story arcs, it, some really, really goddamn sad moments. I'm not even gonna lie here, like... God damn it, guys. But the ending, it had a lot of controversy because it wasn't as good as it should have been. They didn't really go with the, you know, yeah, all your choices you made will reflect it. No, it's just three slightly different ending colored cutscenes. But they did release a DLC to kind of add a little bit to it. But again, decent, but it just missed the mark. Max Payne 3. Now, I love the Max Payne series. I enjoyed the first two games, especially the second one. The third one is a really, really good title. It's basically the last game for the Max Payne series at this point, but overall, if you want something dark, if you want something gritty, slow-mo, third-person shooting action, look no further. All right, uh, Medal of Honor Limited Edition for the PlayStation 3. This is actually the best version to get compared to the Xbox 360 or the PC version because this one actually includes an HD release of Medal of Honor Frontline which was an insanely really good game with a great soundtrack with it but overall I enjoyed this game for what it was because it basically brought Medal of Honor to the modern uh, combat uh, era but like while it was interesting because the single player was on the Unreal Engine but the multiplayer was on the Frostbite Engine because DICE had a hand with its multiplayer and a single player, I, I enjoyed it. The multiplayer was also fun too, but it definitely gave off Battlefield vibes because it was made by this, it was made by DICE basically, but it was, it wasn't a bad attempt. It wasn't a bad attempt to try to bring Medal of Honor into the modern uh, warfare setting. Now, next up is Medal of Honor Warfighter. I wish I can say this game was good, like, when you bought this game, you got into the Battlefield 4 beta, and that's one of the reasons why I bought it back then when it came out, but it just... I didn't like it as much. And to be honest, because of how bad uh, how bad the sales were for this one, they didn't make another one. So basically, the Medal of Honor series is kind of dead. All right, next up is Killzone 2. Uh, I love the Killzone series. The first game, they, they shouldn't have called it the Halo Killer. But the second game was really, really awesome. The storyline I enjoyed a lot, and the multiplayer was fucking fantastic. 
Granted, the multiplayer servers are offline now, but it's just, it's still worth it just to pick up the single player game, and you can pick it up for cheap as well. Like, I got this for like three bucks. Metal Gear Solid The Legacy Collection. This included Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, 3, Peace Walker, and some of the original Metal Gear games, and Metal Gear Solid 4. It's just, this was basically the Metal Gear Solid collection to get. I love this. I enjoyed this. It is like, this is mine forever. Like, I bought this new and I'm still holding on to it with a vice grip. Uh, overall, if you're a Metal Gear fan, definitely worth getting. Motor Storm. This came out in the early days of the PlayStation 3. But I had actually a lot of fun. It was like vehicular chaos, basically. Drive different vehicles, different environments, and just like when you crashed in, it was span. Sp span? It was span. <laughs> English, it would, when you were crashing into other people, it was just utter, utter chaos. And of course, ramping up that chaos is uh, Motor Storm Apocalypse. So again, same gameplay, but apocalypse setting and just the same thing you could expect from the Motor Storm game. Next up on the list is Operation Flashpoint Dragon Rising. Now I did uh, enjoy the Operation Flashpoint games and this was actually a good attempt in bringing an Operation Flashpoint game to the Xbox 360 and the PS3 era. I enjoyed it for what it was, I liked it, I wish more people were into it, but again, not many people like this style of gameplay on the consoles. On the PC, that's a different story. Like, there's a dedicated there's a dedicated niche for that, but uh, for a time, I enjoyed it. For like, uh, you know, rolling with your squad, giving commands, just trying to think strategically because you can literally die like one or two hits. So you, you don't go out, you know, guns blazing. You have to be smart, you gotta think, carefully and you got to be patient so come oh God damn it y y you know what's funny you know so come for like the the last so come game confrontation it wasn't really a so come game in the beginning but it became a really good so come game after they fixed everything updated it gave it more content but so come for that's when super interactive came back to do their series again but I'm blaming not only them, but Sony especially for kind of dictating what the game should be like. And this was not a SOCOM game. This failed as a SOCOM game. It, it, it's like a stain. It's like a stain on SOCOM. Like this is what killed Zipper Interactive. This is what killed the series. And people been asking and begging, hey, can we get, get a sequel or okay, can we get a re-release with the original first three titles on PS2? Sony says, we'll think about it, but overall, we're not going to get it. This game killed it. All right, next up on the list is Tom Clancy's End War. I, now, I uh, won some contests with this and I got some like promotional material, which is awesome, but I enjoyed this for what it was. This was a real-time strategy game on the consoles, but... Uh, to help make things easier, included voiceover uh, controls, which the PS3 version came with the Bluetooth headset, which was really useful. And I enjoyed it, especially with the, like, back in the early days where the multiplayer was popular, you're trying to outsmart your enemies, trying to command your units. It, the voice uh, the voice controls were actually actually worked. They, they did a pretty damn good job. Like, sometimes it might misinterpret, but nine times out of ten, it worked beautifully. All right, next up on the list is, ah, yes, Rainbow Six Vegas 2. Now, the first Rainbow Six Vegas game was really good. The second one definitely added on top of it. Granted, it was it definitely ramped up the action a bit, but I enjoyed it for what it was. The multiplayer was a lot of fun as well, and the single player fin basically finished what Vegas has started. But overall, if you like Rainbow Six, it's like, pick up this game. I'm just going to do all three of this. The Uncharted uh, 1, 2, and 3. Uh, they are really, really awesome titles. This, it, they, if you, they're really like, it's like watching Indiana Jones, but if Indiana Jones is like Nathan Fillion, like humor. I enjoyed, I enjoyed these games a lot. The first one brought us in. The second one, again, best one in the series, in my opinion. The third one, while not as good as the second one, it still stood on its own. I enjoyed, you know, if you're looking for a action adventure game on the PlayStation 3, again, the Uncharted series is really good option. Mercenary 2, World in Flames. You're just blowing shit up at this point. Resistance 2. The first Resistance Fall of Man was a launch title. Resistance 2 definitely ramped up everything that the first one uh, put down. I enjoyed it. It was awesome. It had not only the multiplayer, it had co-op mode with it as well. Up to 60 players. 60 player chaotic battles in here. 
it was crazy, but I enjoyed the campaign, I enjoyed its story, I enjoyed its characters, I also enjoyed, you know, the co-op. Multiplayer was just a clusterfuck in its own right, but overall, I enjoyed this game. This is kind of one of this, again, the same thing, where the second game, I usually enjoyed more than the first or the third game. Unreal Tournament 3. You can actually upload custom content on the PlayStation 3. Yes, they actually allowed that, uploading custom content, maps, characters, whatever, you could do that in this title. Granted, I don't even think anyone plays this anymore, so if you're just looking for just multiplayer bots, it's, like, this game is like dirt cheap. No one really plays this anymore on the PS3, I don't think. I'm gonna try it out, but again, the fact you can upload your own mod, you know, upload mods and different maps and all that stuff on the PS3 version, it definitely made it the better version to get. Though, let's be honest, Unreal 2K4 was the best one in the series. Valkyra Chronicles. I love Valkyra Chronicles a lot. This game, it was basically anime, but World War II, but its own thing with like magic and stuff like that. But I loved this game a lot. It had, it was strategy. It had decent story. It had great characters to follow and some twists and turns. This game is awesome, and it's also available on the PlayStation 4. So if you haven't had the chance or you can't get the PS3 version, you got a PS4. I highly recommend. It. Next up, Zone of the Enders HD Collection. Now, this included Zone of the Enders 1 and Zone of the Enders 2 and the demo from Metal Gear Rising. Overall, I love Zone of the Enders series. Again, this is made by Hideo Kojima himself, and it was just really good, really awesome. Fast-paced mecha action. And with a story, with anime cutscenes for the second one. And I think the first one, too. It's been a while since I played the first one, but the second one is still kind of fresh in my mind. And uh, also, just a heads up, the Zone of the Enders 2, they redid that as well for the PlayStation 4, so that's available too if you can't get the PS3 HD Collections version, even though the PS4 version doesn't have the first one. Uh, Brothers in Arms Hell's Highway for the PS3. Now, do note that this, you know, I just got like a generic. Uh, box art version from GameStop like the, this thing what this thing go, what looked like it went through hell but uh, the I enjoyed the Brothers in Arms series a lot I, I believe the PS3 version was solid but the Xbox 360 one was the better one to get but overall I enjoyed the series what it was the Hell's Highway had a really great campaign I enjoyed it but sadly we're probably not gonna get a sequel to this even Troy Baker one of the uh, the main voice actor he said, so when are we going to get a sequel to Gearbox? And they're like, uh, we don't know. I'm like, so we're probably not going to get a sequel to this, which sucks because they definitely hinted off at a sequel to this. Okay, what is next here? We have IL2 Sturmovic Birds of Prey. Now, this is actually made by the same guys who did the, I believe, the War Thunder series. I want to say they, I want to say that these are the same guys who did it. But overall, this is a flight combat game set in World War II. Overall, I, I haven't had a chance to play this, honest, but I heard like this is a really good flight combat game set in World War II. So uh, I picked it up for like five bucks at GameStop. It might be a little cheaper now. So if you want some, if you want a flight combat game set in World War II era, go with this one. All right, Armored Core Verdict Day. The if you're I, I need, need I say any more? First off, there is still a multiplayer community that is still playing this game to date. It's uh, between this and the Xbox 360, the PlayStation 3 is the more popular version to get because there's still a decent amount of not only uh, US or European gamers, but the majority is Japanese gamers and they will whip your, they will whip your ass six ways a Sunday. But if you're an Armored Core fan, this is definitely uh, a game to get. But seriously, if you play online now with this, you are gonna get your ass whooped. I, I'm not gonna lie, you are literally gonna get your ass whooped. We have Tom Clancy's Hawks. Now, this is basically a competitor to the Ace Combat series, and again, I never played this. I need to, I need, I need to check. I, I bought some of these games just to add to my collection to be like, I'll, I'll, I'll play it later. But like games that I need to play is Rising Core horrifically. Next up is Warhammer 40k Space Marine. Don't fuck with the Emperor. This is, this is actually. Uh, one of the better Warhammer 40k titles out there. This is, even though you're playing as the Ultramarines or the Blue Smurfs. Yeah, I said it, but this is actually one of the uh, decent games to get if you're a Warhammer 40k fan. It does have multiplayer, but it's... I don't even think anyone plays this anymore. I'll, I'll, ch I'll, ch I'll check it out, but I don't think anyone plays it. Just, you play it for the single player. Fuck it, Eric! 
Virtual Fighter 5 for the PS3. Do note that the Virtual Fighter series, it is not a button masher friendly series. You literally need to know the combos, but I enjoyed this game for what it was. It, it Again, you, know, you have to learn the combos. You can't button mash, but I love it. The character is nice and interesting, and I had to pick it up. Again, got it cheap, so yeah. Red Alert 3. It, 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 you know, for all intents and purposes, it was definitely a, it was a worthy sequel because they had a lot of things that, that they got right in this game, including uh, for the cutscenes, full motion video cutscenes, and with a pretty decent cast. Uh, but it, it, it was the Red Alert gameplay that I knew and loved growing up. Again, the second one was the best one, in my opinion, but the second one, but the third one definitely stood on its own. Uh, if you're a strategy fan, pick it up. The PS3 version is the best version to get compared to the Xbox 360 one, so try it out. I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. Space! Alright, we're getting... Alright, what's next here? Uh, Warhawk. I remember when this game came out. It was a really, really awesome third-person online multiplayer game. And sadly, I think the servers are closing this month, but for what it was, I definitely had some really, really great moments with this. Sadly, the sequel, Starhawk, wasn't as good as it should have been, but Warhawk definitely has a special place in my heart. Next up is Splinter Cell Trilogy. Now, this has the original Splinter Cell, Pandora Tomorrow, and Chaos Theory in HD with trophies. Now, if you enjoy stealth-based games, like, not stealth action, stealth-based titles, Go with this one. That and has, you know, Sam Fisher being voiced by Michael Ironside is really awesome too. All right, I think I'm almost done, but I got two Japanese games actually for, that I own for the PlayStation 3. The first one, my sister basically gave it to me, which is Tales of Vesperia. Wait a minute, isn't this coming out pretty soon on the PS4 or something like that? So yeah, I, I was like, it looks like Korean. Uh, next up is No More Heroes. For the PlayStation 3, now, No More Heroes originally came out on the Nintendo Wii, but eventually a PS3 version did came out, and I got the Japanese one, and I loved it, I enjoyed it, and it's it's No More Heroes, I love this series a lot. Again, I will follow developers to the ends of the world here, so. And now you're probably thinking to yourself, wow, Panda, that was a lot of decent amount of games in there, Some one, a couple of ones that it's like, oh wow, you actually got that, and other ones that you're like, wait a minute, there's some titles in there that you're kind of missing, aren't you? Like, yes, but again, I'm going to be doing a physical based only with the PS3 uh, soon, but I still got I still got a good amount of digital games to go through. All right, hey everyone, now we're going to go through my list of uh, downloadable titles. Now, do note that this doesn't represent my whole uh, digital library. This is just games I downloaded. So again, I'm going to try to get some of these games uh, on a physical copy instead of having it on digital just to be just to play it safe but let's go down the list first off ace combat infinity was a free-to-play ace combat game i don't know why i still have it downloaded it was basically this game helped uh make ace combat 7 like it brought it like assault horizon wasn't that good of an ace combat game but this game brought it back it was a free-to-play and they made enough mo enough money to warrant making ace combat 7 but i probably should get rid of this but i just like i just i just kind of like to see it because i did play a good amount of the multiplayer uh, next game, Vanquished. This was a... <laughs> you know what? I'm not even gonna lie. I, uh, there are some games out there that I got. I don't want to bullshit you guys and say, just, just talk about generic things about it. I got, I think this was on the PlayStation Plus. I picked it up. I need to sit down and actually play it. So, yeah. Uh, next game up on there is Persona 4 Arena. Now, this is basically Persona 4 but as a fighting game. Well, it was definitely interesting. It definitely had the Persona 4 characters, it definitely had the uh, theme, definitely had the feel of the Persona game, but you were just beating the shit out of each other, let's just face it. Next up is Mirror's Edge. I enjoyed the first game a lot. When it first came out, I said to myself, wait a minute, DICE made this? But it was a really good attempt. I loved the art style, especially to this game. I thought it was unique, it was really awesome. Next up is, up oh, <laughs> oh God. Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. A Resident Evil game by Resident Evil name only. It was a, again, it was more action than horror. Uh, uh, let's just move on! Okay, uh, next up is the Devil May Cry HD Collection, which includes Devil May Cry 1, 2, and 3 in HD. So if you're a fan of the series, definitely, definitely check it out. I think this was like on the PSN Plus as well. 
A lot of these games I got on PlayStation Plus, so. Oh, Ico. Uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, they need to redo this game. They got Shadow of the Colossus on the PS4. They redid it for that. But God sakes, people, bring back, bring Ico on the PS4. Give it better visuals here. Really good story with a really interesting twist. Ah, PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. I don't even think the servers are online anymore. They, it was basically PlayStation's answer to Super Smash Brothers, And it was decent. It, it wasn't bad. It had some of the most iconic PlayStation characters on there, as you can see here. But it, it, it wasn't a bad attempt. It was just, we knew what they were trying to do, guys. Deadly Premonition, the director's cut. Uh, I get, I never played this game. I think I got on the PSN Plus as well because you get a lot of games on PlayStation Plus, which is worth it, but uh, I need to check this out, so expect a let's play for this. Okay, next up is DuckTales Remastered. I, oh my God, I remember playing this game back in the day growing up, and I was so happy to when it, when it re-released. I was, I, yeah. Come on, DuckTale fans out there, especially with the cartoon series. Come on. I know you're out there. Uh, Medal of Honor Frontline. Again, this is the HD version of uh, the Medal of Honor Frontline game that originally came out back in the Xbox original on the PS2. This is a really fantastic title. The PS3 version had trophies. But I only think, the only way you can get this game, I believe, is through the Medal of Honor game on the PS3. SSX. Oh, if you want a, if you want a snowboarding game with style and its own personality... Look no further. Resident Evil 4, which kind of annoys me that I have, the font is kind of lowercase. Not, You know what? Just it, It's a little pet peeve here, but this basically what brought Resident Evil to the action uh, scene, where it was becoming more action than horror itself. But this one, I actually enjoyed it a lot. It was a definitely good game. Oh, yes. Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. This was the online edition. It had online multiplayer, but I love... It's basically Street Fighter Third Strike on the PS3 with online multiplayer. I love the Third Strike edition of Street Fighter. I, I love it to death. This one I had to buy. Uh, next up is Virtual Fighter Show 5 Show... Wow. Okay, so the next one is Virtual Fighter V uh, Final Showdown. This is basically this, but with just added DLC. Let's just face it. I think this was like really stupid cheap too. That's why I bought it. Okami HD. Enough said. Good game. Download it. Ah, uh, Batman Arkham Asylum. This was such a fantastic, fantastic uh, Batman title. They really did knock it out of the park with the first game. And the fact that they re... They got on most of the same cast who did the animated series. Most. It was just freaking amazing. Saints Row the Third. I enjoyed the Saints Row games a lot. The third was definitely a damn good attempt. The second one, I, I would have to say the third one was the best one in my opinion. This was one of those rare moments like, yes, the third game is the better game to get. So I, I loved it. Jet Set Radio originally came out on the Dreamcast, but again ported over to several other systems. But enough said. It's a good game. Go get it. Well, I don't even think you can get it now. I I, I don't even know. Wow, Scott Pilgrim versus the World on my PlayStation Three. Now this, this is this you can't get this anymore. They actually, I, I think the the license. Uh, they, they it ran out, and you cannot buy this anymore on the PS3. But if you already got it, you get to keep it. This did include online multiplayer. I will probably be doing a Let's Play of this in the future. Again, there's a lot of games out there. I'm going to be planning to do Let's Plays for this year on the past gen system. So yeah, but Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. This uh, this was this was a really good game. Uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, a definite highlight in the series. This is again, I love this second game more than the first or third one, especially the over the third one. Third one was just uh, weird story, darling. But the second one I enjoyed a lot. The char the story was really good. The characters were really well done. The multiplayer was awesome, and the zombie mode was great. Catherine, uh, this is one of my top favorite Atlas games to date. I am definitely gonna get a physical copy of this. I do have it on the Xbox 360 as well, and it just came out recently on the PC via Steam. So yeah, I really enjoy this game a lot. Is uh, really awesome. I just wish it had an anime series, to be honest. Uh, the last game that I downloaded on here, again, it is. Uh, I have tons of other games that I didn't download yet, but I need to just upgrade my PS3's hard drive. 
uh, is Spec Ops The Line. A really... I need to get the physical copy of this, but this is a really... It's a really good story-driven game. The, the gameplay was basic, but the story and its characters is what made it fantastic. So, but it was really, really dark. Like, part of darkness dark. So, I enjoyed this game. I'll probably be doing Let's Play in the future. But other games I did download on my PlayStation 3 is Katamari uh, Damacy. Uh, and also, for my original PlayStation titles, I got the Metal Gear VR missions, the Metal Gear Solid, Command & Conquer, Red Alert, Resident Evil 2, and, of course, Harvest Moon Back to Nature. All right, folks, that is it. Wow, that was, a, that was a good amount of PlayStation 3 games that I do own both physically and digitally out there. Again, I do have more games I own digitally. I just don't have it installed because my hard drive space is running out. So when I uh, upgrade my PlayStation 3's hard drive, my slim version at least, I will be adding more games in there. I'll probably install an SSD in there, to be honest. But overall, that is it for today. Again, my collection is growing. I'm gonna try to get a physical only release with the digital only titles. Like the only, you know, the only ones that I have on there is, would be digital. Like can't get any more, just get it on the PSN store specifically. But overall, that was a good amount of PlayStation 3 games I owned. Some, like again, when I was going through some of these games, it just brought back certain memories of me when I first started playing it. And I, it just, it kind of makes me want to play these games again, to be honest. It's like, it's, I, I really like, I really should do these videos more often. But this was my current PS3 collection to date for January 2019. I'll probably do one at the end of the year to see where, uh, how big my collection grew. But overall, guys, uh, thank you guys so much for watching and checking out my video. Again, I've been just on the rise for collecting uh, games again. But uh, overall, post down there in the comment box of what do you think. Also, post down on what games I should be uh, I should pick up as well for the PlayStation 3. I'm always out to pick up some games. Some of you are probably wondering, like, where is Elder Scrolls Skyrim or Fallout 3? Like, I own it on different systems. Calm yourself. <laughs> Calm yourself. You know, uh, there are certain games out there that I should be picking up. Again, this is what I have now. But I, I'm definitely interested to see where my collection will be at at the end of the 2019. So overall, thank you guys for coming and checking my video. Don't forget that like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Above all else, you can feel free to check out my Patreon page if you want to help support my channel. And of course, I am also partnered with ayashike.moi for anything and everything anime and the otaku fandom, which I will be doing exclusive articles, video content, guests uh, on their pod on the podcast as well. Uh, check out the website down in the description box below. This is Geeky Panda here. I'm out. Stay geeky, my friends.